Okay, so today we're going to start building our uh, dry sump tank for my little 8.2 deck height um, small block four that's going to go in the uh, 66 tube. And what I've done since I have the luxury of having CAD and a computer and a printer, I made uh, paper templates <coughs> for the fan rails, which we'll be cutting out of the 661 aluminum. Go like that. And then the cross section of the oil pan is going to look something like that little room to put the uh, pickups. This is a uh, six stage auto verde pump so we're going to have four scabbing stages in the pan and one in the uh, lifter valley. So the shape will be something like that there. So let's get to it. Okay here's our chunk of uh, 160 thick 6061 T6 aluminum and here's our little paper pan rails. So we'll use these as our templates to make real ones. So I think I'll use some die chem here to uh, blue the whole thing so I can mark it and we have our scribe to march, mark the uh, lines and our center punch to mark all the holes. Um, as you know only use a scribe and scratch the metal where you plan on cutting. Don't ever use this to mark where a bend would be in aluminum because it will inevitably fatigue and break on you sometime down the road at a very inopportune time. Okay, so here's our laid out two pieces. I laid it out so that the bandsaw can run right through here, break these two, and then uh, I'll probably just go ahead and scribe a straight line right through here right now. I like, I like to leave it so that my leftovers have a nice straight edge, so I'll throw a square on there and put a line right down through there so that this piece will be good for something else later. I'm um, going to go ahead and drill the holes first just because it's nice to have one contiguous piece rather than a little sliver flying around like a helicopter in the drill press if something goes wrong. Do yourself a favor and get some of these double-ended eighth-inch little starter drills. You can get these nice and cheap and buy them in bulk um, to get your holes going. This, these are great for when you got to put a whole 6,000 Clecos in your car when you're fabricating everything. Um, it's also nice just to get the starter holes and stuff like this. Now we're going to go back around with a 312 drill, so it should give about enough tolerance to uh, get all the bolt holes to line up. Um, the reason I like to drill one big piece is so that you can chuck the piece up against the column on the drill. If, it, if the part's touching there and the drill grabs, it's at least not going to come out and become a buzzsaw and cut you in half. The worst thing to do would be to drill out here like this using yourself as the column, right? The other thing is always have a nice piece of hardwood or something so that you don't scratch the back of your aluminum part all up while you're drilling the front side. Okay, so all the holes are drilled to size, and I'm just going to go around with a countersink here. And I actually used the positive stop on the drill press here, so we'll get the same depth hole every time. So the countersink will be the same size.
Well, so much for the pretty work. Now here comes the ugly work. I gotta cut this poor thing out on this crappy Chinese band saw. Maybe if enough of you watch these videos, I can afford to buy a new wall. Now we have our rough cut parts here. You can see it's pretty jagged there on the edge from where the bandsaw cut it. And I like to finish things like this with a file. Um, you really shouldn't grind aluminum. It just loads up the paper anyway and it makes a smeary mess depending on the grit that you're running. It may just end up spalling it. So. These files are uh, um, uh, Mickelson's and they're made um, for aluminum. So you can see how the pattern's quite a bit different there. And they're actually meant to be pushed across the aluminum and then drug back. Because when you drag them back, that clears the pins, gets the pins of aluminum out of there. Because that's the big problem with filing is that aluminum will, will stick in your file. But um, <clears throat> I'd, I'd much rather file than, than grind. So I just have my cheesy little soft jaws here. Some blocks of wood just duct taped in there. But even 6061 is no match for the hardness of a file. That'll clear that right up and make a nice straight edge. And uh, I got a couple of radii to put on here and clean up this outer piece here. Okay, so now our part's all filed. Edge is nice and straight. And now all of the corners here are razor sharp. So, although the file cuts right through 6061 with no problem, it will cut right through your skin. So, just do yourself a favor and get a deburring tool, which just keep in mind that these deburring tools, they take a set as soon as you use them. So I'm a lefty, so I tend to do it this way, but however you use it the first time, that's pretty much the only way the blade's going to work. It's not going to work for me going this way anymore. That puts a nice break on the edge, so we'll just do that, get it all cleaned up, and get the die cam off there and see how it fits on the block. Well, here's one of our brackets done. Flanges, whatever. I just stuck two screws in there to uh, hold it up and show if you can see all the, all the holes line up just dandy. So, one tiny piece of this oil pan done go ahead and finish up the other side and then we can get on to bending some sheet metal and making the rest of the pan. Okay so here's our two pan rails so now we need to make the front and the rear uh, pieces so I've got this piece of stock cut that's right width already and we basically just need to make it long enough to wrap over there so a little trick just lay a piece of tape over the arc that you want, and then you can lay it flat on your piece. Sure, I could calculate it, but it's just as good. So we'll cut that to length, maybe leave a little bit extra, and then put it in the slip roll and uh, make that arc.
Okay, so here's our front piece. Um, of course, this is way thicker than what the uh, slip roll was rated for, but it's only about an inch wide, so a little sweat and you can work through it. But uh, we don't want it to fit super tight to the cover, right? Because we still have to squish the, uh, the rubber gasket in here. So I figured we need about, I don't know, 30 thou clearance or so. Also, it's probably a good time to point out on small black Ford, um, there are, you know, the one piece gaskets and then the four piece gaskets and the two can never be interchanged. So the later model, 91 and up one piece gaskets, the corners of the pans are different. The depth of this half moon is different depending on, cause it's counting on having a thicker gasket here with limiters in it. So just keep that in mind. I see a lot of people out there on the forums dealing with pan leaks and things like that. So probably what I'm going to do is just use the rubber end pieces from a uh, four piece gasket set and then just glue the pan rails on with RTV. We'll see. But I think set about like that, a little bit of filing on this piece, but set something like that. I'll be able to do either a gasket all the way around or a gasket on the end, probably be fine. All right, so now we'll just make the rear piece. So I don't know who first said uh, 10 pounds of crap in a five pound bag, but they were probably working on a 289 302 when they said it. Um, it's one of the examples. <clears throat> and actually this is common to Windsor and 289 302, but uh, this is a dart block and it has registered main caps similar to uh, the Yates motors. So the main cap, that's four bolt main, and the caps actually press into the pan rail, essentially. Well, that makes everything a lot wider. And uh, you can see here up at the top, there's very, very little room for the pan between the pan bolts and the register there. So you have that on the three center main caps on the uh, passenger side, on the right-hand side. So um, on the Yates motors, actually, they don't even bother using these bolt holes. So they just glue it along here. I don't know. We'll have to see because actually the, the I'm not even going to be able to run the sheet metal of the oil pan inside. It's going to have to be on the outside, and then i got to weld it. So I'm betting I'm not going to be able to use those holes either. We'll have to see, but I'm guessing not. But something to keep in mind when you're looking for oil pans and things for these dart blocks or if you've got a D3 block or something like that. Um, gets real cozy with the oil pan. A couple more little details. Um, see this hole in the back of the last main cap? That's to drain oil back to the pan from the main rear main. So half the oil is going to be coming out this way somehow and getting between the counterweights and back to the pan. But there's also some going to be coming out the back side and if this hole were to be covered up it would push the oil seal out so just made a little notch in the rear piece here to let that oil back that's been there since the model a days um, also put a radius on the front edge of the rear pan rail there so that it uh, fits in snug with the radius that's on the main cap just did that with a router. Pretty dangerous, so I didn't tape that. But you can you can router aluminum just fine.
But here's our pan rail all welded together. It's not uh, not warped too bad at all. I have a Dynasty 200 um, set to about 120 hertz. Um, I don't remember the AC balance. I think it was more like 70 versus the old machine. You know, the non-inverter machines, you'd be stuck at 50 and 60 hertz. So it's real easy to get down in the corners with that machine. Um, <clears throat> so I was welding it right when it was on the block so that everything was in position. But you want to make sure that you put the ground clamp on the part that you're welding and not, I don't know, on the crank snout or something and make it arc through the bearings. That would be bad. Um, crank still turns fine. <clears throat> so, we're all ready. I mean, there'll be some finished welding. I gotta, you know, round these edges over where the gas goes seep. I'll probably save that until everything else is on there. Um, gonna be a little bit of finish work here and there on, on the thing when we're done. But, we're ready to start making the sheet metal pieces finally. All that work just to make a flange. Okay, we're getting pretty close here. <clears throat> so I made the front and rear pieces. Um, they're made out of 6061, uh, just flat pieces. But this rounded section here I made out of 3003 because the 6061 just isn't going to enjoy that. Um, got it all tacked in place here. So I still have to make the far side that uh, has the pickups. So that gives you a good shot there of how much room there is from the crankshaft to the bottom there. So I'm going to try to make this far side in one piece, which would be up and back and up so there's going to be two breaks well turns out i totally wasn't up to it today um ended up making this out of two pieces the second bin down i didn't get the radius right it was too tight so then the, the bin started to crack a little and uh also the this vertical piece didn't it didn't fall where it needed to it was too far out and it was all shot so i just cut it off and then we did it like that, so we'll have a weld seam running right along here, which isn't inexcusable. It's not terrible. Um, so I'm going to tack all these pieces in place, and then all we have left is to put in the scavenge ports. Well, I got uh, cases of welditis, so I just went ahead and welded the whole thing together. Um, still have to put four scavenge pickups here. So we have these. Threaded bungs that have to go here. And screen to pick up. And I'm probably going to use this tubing here. So probably run the tubing off of this fitting. Weld up the end of the tube, put a slot in it, and that'll be that'll pick up the oil off the bottom. That's the plan, I think. I welded the majority of this on the block with it bolted down. Um, if I didn't do that, there's just no way this thing would fit at all. So, we just crawl around too much. The flange isn't thick enough to hold its shape through all of that. Even as is, it's a little bit sketchy in a couple of spots. But, there we are. It's like a glove. So we'll add the pickups and be all done. Okay, so we're ready to assemble all our little pickups here. So I have the four um, scavenge uh, stages drilled in the pan. Just used a hole saw for that. And this is each one of our little pickups. And this is just a piece of tube with a, about a three quarter inch hole drilled in it. And we're going to cap off the end of it there and weld it to this bung. So that'll be our pickup. And we have a, this is a Moroso, um, Moroso uh, screen 
and fitting there. Make sure no junk if gets into the our expensive pump at the engine grenades or anything else. So basically this little unit will weld this up. And that goes inside the pan. Like so. And it'll sit about about a half inch off the bottom of the pan so that we don't suck up a bunch of dirt and or else it could collect down there and give it some room to breathe. So that means we'll basically have a running, a bit of a running level of oil on the very bottom of the pan, but that's fine. I'm not going for every last bit here. <clears throat> this engine doesn't have piston squirters or any other really uh, fancy lube set up, so we don't want to get rid of every last bit of oil whipping around in there. We want to still get some on the cylinder liners and on the bottom of the pistons to cool those down, things like that. All right, so we'll weld all this together, and uh, the last step, once has all the assemblies are done, we'll to put them in here and weld this bung in all the way around, and the pan will be finished. Well, here we are with our completed pan. Um, we have our four screens in there. You can see our pickups. Four pickups, pretty much one for each bay. They don't really need to be strategically placed, honestly. Fits like a glove. I got all the bolt holes lined up nice now. Gave the gave it a little tug here and there to it was kind of pyramided a little bit from all the welding or uh, matchboxed a little bit. And I think you can see that uh, so I put these two 90 degree fittings on here just to start to get an idea how we're going to connect A to B. I think you can see it's going to be a little snug. So maybe we'll make a video for that next. How we're going to connect these four scavenge stages to these four pickups. And then we'll have the one last stage so we'll go to the valley. So we're going to pull most of the oil out of the valley and not drip it back down in the crankcase. So I hope you found this helpful. See you around.